who wouldn't love to go back to a time where the skies were clearer, the grass was greener, and the music, it just hit right. The era itself told the story of life while ornamenting it with neon lit streets, popped collars, an incredibly vast range of music that nailed itself on the wall of fame of human history. To recreate those 80s hits on your home studio, you need to follow a few simple steps. And in this video, we're gonna take a step back in time and help you to reproduce the much coveted signature sound from the 80s in 5 simplified ways. So without further ado, let's begin. The gated reverb can be considered as the single most iconic sound from the 80s that's still being used to this day. You'll notice this even in modern day songs when hearing the Louvre by Lord or Midnight City by M83. Originally made as an accident during a Peter Gabriel recording session, the gated reverb instantly became a hit for recording and mixing drum hits. In order to produce that, we need to route our snare track to a bus, which is gonna be a reverb send. After applying our favorite plugin and setting up a hall or theater like sound with 2 or 3 seconds of decay, we need to apply the gate. A gate plugin that has a sidechain routing will work like a charm. The result of this is likely to create a powerful sound without a long reverb tail taking up space. And voila, you just channeled your inner Phil Collins. In order to replicate the electrifying and spacious guitar riff such as Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne, you need to bring out almost every modulation, reverb, and delay plugins you possess. The 80s focused heavily on the chorus and automatic double tracking to give you a sense of space. In order to replicate that, throw in your preferred chorus plugin or pedal and be as expressive as you can be. After that, just add a little reverb to come up with the patterns to fill up the remaining sonic space and there you have it, Van Halen approves. If a single instrument can be considered as the most iconic in the 80s, it would be the synth. Considering how a lot of their preset sound banks are now available to the masses through modern software, you don't have to worry about getting an original one at your disposal. With technology being more advanced, the playable and programmable synths started to include effect banks and processors such as arpeggios, which is another popular sound of the 80s. Considering you have a general lack of ideas regarding the keys or are completely new to this, fret not as arpeggiators are here to save the day with some added flair to your 80s inspired masterpiece. To make it understandable in an auditory manner, we would recommend checking out the song Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics. The synth brought with it the drum machines and gave musicians the power to play with the beat in their own time and then override it with another play. Similar to the arpeggiator, it does not require a lot of skill and learning to play and gives the musicians an opportunity to work with something different. However, please understand that we don't mean to imply how the usage of a drum machine is targeted towards people who are musically incapable, but it just lowers the skill ceiling in general to further inspire aspiring musicians. When you're looking to reproduce that 80s sound, we'd suggest you tinker with the sound banks of the original machines. Considering how a ton of drum sample packs now come in digital format, you really don't need to break your bank trying to buy an original one. You can also get inspired by some actual songs that use drum machines, such as Turbo Lover by Judas Priest. And finally, we come to the voices. Back in the 80s, it all came down to producing a voice that had a very wide and spacious audio profile while having a strong vocal presence at the same time. The musicians used the lexicon reverb units as the standard for achieving that effect and were loved and adored by musicians everywhere. To further enhance the sense of space, short slapback delays were another signature part of the vocals. In terms of harmony, there were multiple layers. These layers helped to fatten up the vocal lines, which resulted in an overall powerful voice, which you could implement in your own projects to get that 80s flavor. In the end, it all came down to the flair for the dramatic, considering how autotune and detailed pitch correction were merely a concept, therefore, we would suggest not to be too much of a perfectionist and focus on the natural voice as much as you can. 
So that was all about the 5 ways you can capture an 80s sound in your home studio. We hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Do let us know your favorite song from the 80s as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want more videos like this on your feed.